In this problem, we're going to look at an actually indeterminate rod, which is to say this uh, complex shaft, which is uh, contained between two fixed walls uh, located at A and B. Now, it's a complex rod because it's made up of two different cross sections or two different materials, or in this case, both. So we have a hollow shaft spanning between A and C, uh, which is made of magnesium, and the material properties are shown. And then we have a solid aluminum rod between parts C and B, uh, again, with the material properties uh, as shown in the problem. Now, we have a load applied at C, 100 kilonewtons, going to the right, or in the positive x direction, if I were to identify that, we'll have a positive x direction. We have two possible reactions. We have only loading in the x direction, so we're only going to consider loading in the x direction. We have two possible reactions, a reaction at A, a reaction at B, and we have only one equation of equilibrium that we can use, which is to say the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. So what that means to us is that this problem is statically indeterminate. When we have an indeterminate problem, it means we're going to have to introduce another equation, a compatibility equation, uh, which talks about the state of the displacements in order to solve the problem. So I've drawn some vertical lines down on the page, down here, uh, and then some horizontal lines across it where we'll do our free body diagram, our axial force diagram, and our displacement graph. Filling out the free body diagram there, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to put in my applied force here. Label that as 100 kilonewtons applied at C. Grab a blue pen and put in my reaction at A and reaction at B. I'll draw them into the left uh, using a little bit of intuition in that case. Label them reaction at A, reaction at B. I'm going to label my x-axis here so we can have a sign convention in accordance with the A. Uh, Cartesian coordinate system that makes a little bit of sense. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the one equation of equilibrium that we have. I'll write that down here. So sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And then working left to right off my free body diagram, I have negative r at a. And then the applied load would be in the positive direction. So that's 100 kilonewtons at c and negative reaction at B. And then I'm just going to reorder that equation in terms of our A, and that's for how I want to use it later, and call that 100 kilonewtons minus RB. And I'm going to label that equation 1. So before we go any further, I'm going to use the free body diagram that I've done, and I'm going to draw in, at least qualitatively, the axial force diagram that we should get from this free body diagram, as well as, again, qualitatively, the displacement graph, because it's these two diagrams that are going to allow me to come up with a compatibility equation and go ahead and solve it. So if we look at our free body diagram, again today we have a force to the left, which is going to put that section AC into tension. And so tension to us is normally positive, so I'll, I'll draw it up, and we know it's going to be a uniform so I'm just going to draw this in here. We know it's going to be uniform between A and C, at which time it's going to change. It's going to go down 100 kilonewtons, and then it's going to continue to the right at a constant load here. And we, If you look at the force at C and the reaction at B, you can see it's in compression. So we're in the negative side here of our axial force diagram, and we're going to go across. I'm going to do a couple labels in here. So first off, we know that this is going to be positive, and this is going to be negative. We know that this magnitude in here is going to be RB, just as this magnitude in here is RA. And this change here is going to be the negative 100 kilonewtons. And that qualitatively lays this out. We don't know what RA is, we don't know what RB is, but we do know that the axial force diagram is going to look like that. From there, we can also look at our displacement diagram it's going to elongate in a linear manner uh, up to the center, and then it's going to start to shorten to where it started at zero. And it has to do this because, of course, it's fixed at A, fixed at B, so it's not going to have any axial deformation at either A or B. So now this is really important to us because our next step is our compatibility. Compatibility. 
And for our compatibility, we have, we're statically indeterminant to the first degree, which is to say we need one compatibility equation in order to solve this, right? We see from our equilibrium equation, we have two unknowns, only the one equation. So we need one more equation to solve this. So we have to look at the displacements of the structure and come up with an equation that describes the displacements. The easiest one here is if we look at the displacements over the entire length of the structure, that is to say from A to B, that they sum to zero. They start at zero and they come back to zero, so they sum to zero. And so I'm just gonna write that down in here, say the sum of the displacements between A and B have to equal to zero. That's gonna be useful to us because that also means that the displacements between A and C plus the displacements between C and B have to also equal to zero. And this becomes our compatibility equation. And the other equation, I'm just going to draw it out here in case you have forgotten it. Displacements equal to the axial load over the length of which it's applied divided by the modulus elasticity of the material and the cross-sectional area. And so this equation is going to get used to calculate what these two independent individual displacements are between A and C and C and B. We go down here using that equation, substituting it in. We know that this is the same as between PAC length AC EAC AAC and PCB LCB divided by the modulus CB and area CB. So we're going to draw in the data from the material properties and, and geometric properties. The load, we know that PAC, so we go over to our uh, axial force diagram, we say that the, the force, this PAC internal uh, between A and C, is equal to RA, and we can get that off our axial force diagram. So I can substitute RA for PAC, and the length of AC we get off our diagram is 600 millimeters. Uh, the EAC, so we said that it's a magnesium alloy tube between A and C. So we'll put that in as 44,700 megapascals. Uh, so the area AC is 216 millimeters squared. And then we do the same thing between C and B. So again, we go back to our axial force diagram. The load internal between C and B is equal to the negative RB. And it's applied over a length of 800 millimeters. Now this is aluminum. So we go up to the question and we draw in 73,000 100 megapascals for the modulus and our area is calculated here ACB 314 millimeters squared. This simplifies, I've done a little bit of the math here in the algebra on my own, is equal to 0 0.56 RB. And you notice we get a ratio between the two unknown reactions. And I'm going to label that as equation two. So now we have two equations, two unknowns, straight up algebra. We substitute one into the other in order to solve it. So for me, I've set this up to make it easy to substitute two into one, 0 0.56 RB is equal to 100 kilonewtons minus RB. And we can solve that to figure out that RB is equal to 64.1 kilonewtons. We then substitute that back into uh, either equation. It doesn't really matter which one. And we get RA is equal to 100 kilonewtons minus RB, and we'll substitute 64.1 kilonewtons, and we figure out that RA is equal to 35.9 kilonewtons. 
And we draw in our couple lines to identify our two reactions, RB and RA, which answers uh, really the question part A and part B. Uh, to finish part B uh, with the axial force diagram, what I want to do is I actually want to go in and draw in my actual values so that I can use it uh, effectively later on. So RA then is 35.9. So this is 35.9 kilonewtons at that point, and this value 64.1 kilonewtons. And you can see when I drew the diagram, the ratios aren't quite right. Remember, it was a qualitative drawing of it. Clearly, the force is larger uh, between C and B than it is between A and C, and it doesn't really matter. I could redraw it if I really wanted the fidelity to be correct, or I could just leave it the way it is.